Hey, what is going on everybody? It is Rob with Diligent Dev, and today we're going to be talking about debugging Node.js Lambda functions locally on your own machine and even being able to set breakpoints inside of your code. Now, I'm a huge fan of anything serverless. Um, you don't have to worry about maintaining and scaling your server. It's dirt cheap, and in most cases, it's actually free for you to use. So, one of the big drawbacks that I've seen is that you're not able to debug your code locally, set breakpoints, hover over variables and different methods and see, you know, the different properties and other things that are inside of those. So in this tutorial, we're going to cover that. So stay tuned and we'll get right into it. To be able to debug locally, we'll be using the serverless framework. This is a free open source framework written in Node.js and it's used to make the process of creating Lambda functions much simpler than using AWS's CLI. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open a terminal and I'm going to run the following command npm install dash g serverless. And this will take a second to install and once it's done, I'll be right back. Okay, so now that we have the serverless CLI installed on our machine and in full disclosure, I had some issues installing it on a Mac and I'll put the steps below um, to how I solved that issue. But if you're on a Windows machine, I've tested this and it should work completely fine. So we've set up the CLI and the next thing we need to do is link our AWS account. So if you don't have an AWS account, go ahead and sign up for one and then log in. And this will be the screen that you see when you first log in. Then go to this little search text box and type in I am and click on that. And then what we're going to do is set up a user. So we'll go to the users tab over here. We'll go to add user. I'm just going to call this serverless underscore admin. And we're going to give it programmatic access because the CLI is going to use this to programmatically create resources in AWS for us. So hit next and then you're going to want to give it administrator access and then hit next and then we'll create the user. Now, once you've created the user, you're going to see you have this access ID and secret access key. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and pin this over here and we're going to get the terminal and pin it over here. And we'll clear the terminal. All right. So we're all set up and ready to go. So then what we're going to do is we're going to type in the terminal serverless config credentials dash dash provider and that's AWS dash dash key and we're going to come over here and grab this access key and then we're going to type dash dash secret and we're going to come over here and grab this secret access key And then what it's going to do is set up AWS with the serverless CLI so we have our configuration all ready to go. So now that we have everything installed, let's go ahead and create our serverless project. For that, I'm going to CD into my desktop and I'm going to run the following command. Serverless create dash T for the template that we're going to be using. AWS dash node JS and P for project. And we're going to call this serverless underscore tutorial. And as you can see, a folder just appeared on my screen and we're going to go ahead and open that up with Visual Studio Code. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do now that we're in the project directory in VS Code is I'm going to open up a new terminal and I'm going to run the following command, mbm init dash y and what dash y does is it just goes ahead and creates all the defaults for our npm or package.json file. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to install another package. We're going to say npm i serverless dash offline dash dash save dash dev because this is just a dev dependency to be able to run our project locally. I'm going to go ahead and let that install and once it's installed I'll be right back. So after watching the video I realized I forgot something and that's that we have to install serverless offline globally on our machine as well. So go ahead and open a terminal anywhere and run the following command npm i serverless offline dash g. 
and that's all you need to do. Once this is done installing, go ahead and just resume the video as normal. Now that the server list offline package has installed, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the files that we have in here. Um, the first one is our handler.js, and this is the code where you'd write all your endpoints. Now we're gonna, not going to be touching this because this is just strictly a tutorial on how to debug locally. Uh, the next one is the serverless.yaml file. Now this YAML file controls everything that the serverless CLI is going to do and how it's going to map our different endpoints and there's a lot of different configuration going on in here um, but we're just going to modify a couple different things. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to scroll down a little bit and you got to be really careful on your spaces in these files but I'm going to create a new property called plugins and underneath that I'm going to do dash serverless dash offline and like I said be very careful that you get your space in here after your dash now the next thing we're going to do is set up our endpoint that we um, can hit so I'll go scroll down a little bit and you'll see we have this functions property this hello and you'll see it's referencing han referencing handler which is our file name and then hello which is the function that is inside of this file so we're going to come down here and we're going to make a couple more properties off of this so off of it we'll have an events property and then under there we're going to say dash http so this is an http request we're going to say that the we're going to give it another tab and we're going to say that the path is hello and the method is get. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to run a keyboard shortcut, Alt Shift F. And what that does is it goes ahead and formats everything for us. So I'm going to save this. So then the next thing we're going to do is head over to the debugger tab right here. And we're going to click this Create a Launch JSON. The next thing we're going to do is go down to Node.js. And then what I'm going to do is copy and paste some configuration that I have and throw it in this file. So we're going to take everything and just paste that in. And I will leave this in the description of the video below. And what this does is it sets up um, your debugger so that when you launch it, everything is set up to look at the workspace and run everything so we can debug it locally. Okay, so now that we have that all set up, let's go ahead and jump over to our package.json file. Now in here under scripts, we're going to remove this test script and I'm going to paste in some configuration scripts here. Now essentially what these are doing is it's looking at our local machine and finding our node modules packages that have serverless set up so that we can go ahead and attach a debugger to them. And that's exactly what this statement right here is doing. Now this start statement is referencing our node modules in our own project. So it's going to find the relative path to those. But unfortunately for this debug script, we have to find out where our locally installed global node modules are and find the serverless package. And that's what this is doing right here. This is where it's installed on my machine. Now this will be a little bit different for a Windows computer, but I'll put the configuration in the description below the video. And I'll also have a Medium article link that you can go ahead and check that out. That is all set up for Windows. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is go ahead and run the debugger. So we'll click on this little icon here. You'll see that some things are going on in our debug console. And you'll see now we have different endpoints. It's showing us which ones we have um, in our project. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and copy this one. I'm going to open a program called Postman. And I'm going to paste that in. And I'll go ahead and pin this to this side of the window. And pin this to this side of the window. And then I'm going to open my handler.js and you'll see I have a breakpoint here on the return statement. So all I'm going to do is hit send in Postman and you'll see now we've hit our breakpoint. So I can hover over different variables. It's going to show me the methods and properties off of them. And you can this will allow you to go ahead and debug all of your API functions locally. And if I go ahead and just let it run, you'll see that we get our response that we were sending back and everything's ready to go.
So that is how you debug Node.js Lambda functions locally. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns about this video, go ahead and drop them below. And until next time, happy coding.